All right, hi everybody. I'm Hala. I'm a software engineer here at Nihilus, and I was recently the tech lead on our project to revamp our dashboard. Our old dashboard was really slow and just didn't really have much to offer in terms of like any customer success. So we decided to redo it. We added a bunch of cool new features. And today I'm going to talk about a few of those and briefly touch on some of the technical aspects that went, went into each one of them. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the old dashboard, but I really just want to emphasize how slow it was. <laughs> so this was just like a test application. I have off like four accounts with it, and we are going to reload it. It really likes to take its time to think about these things. All right, so for the main dashboard, we wanted to make the, or the new dashboard, we wanted to make this way faster. So we had to figure out what was making it so slow. And part of the reason it was slow is because this dashboard was written in like inefficient legacy code, and we fixed that by rewriting the dashboard from the ground up. However, it was still slow, and this is because we shard our account data across multiple MySQL databases. This works great when we're dealing just with individual accounts, when we're like grabbing mail sync data, because all of one account's data is in a single shard. But when you care about data from multiple accounts that are across many different shards, it really degrades performance. For example, if you have an application with 50 accounts and each of those accounts is in a different shard, we have to open the database connection, perform the query, and close the database connection 50 times before we have like all the data that we care about, and that takes way too long. So we got around this by building a cache. This cache stores all of the data that the dashboard cares about in a single database. And this data is just like the account IDs, the sync state, the email address, uh, things that are very tiny compared to all of the mail data for an entire account. So it all fits perfectly inside just a tiny single database. We also have a script that runs every minute to check to see if there are any account updates. And this makes sure that the cache data is never stale. And the result is much, much faster. Oh, I have been signed out. There, much faster. Uh, and the speed holds up for uh, applications with thousands of accounts as well. Those of you who may have already been using the new dashboard might see that some of the statuses for accounts don't always match up with what you see in the old dashboard. And this is because we're experimenting with a new heartbeat system. We store a heartbeat for each email folder in an account whenever we finish the sync loop for it. And then we determine whether an account is running based on whether the heartbeats are recent enough for each of the folders in an account. If the heartbeats are recent for all folders, we say that the account is running. If it's recent enough for some, but not others, we say it's partial. And if it's not recent enough for any of the folders, we say that it's stopped. Uh, this is uh, different from our last sync status, which we had to like manually update every time in the code where we thought that the sync transition might have changed. So we had to catch every error, figure out every like sync state, and manually update. Be like, oh, in this case, it's not running anymore. Or, oh, in this case, it's gone from not running to running. And it was virtually impossible to catch all of those scenarios and make sure that the status was up to date. So in theory, this should be much more robust and accurate, but we're still running some integrity tests, so there could still be some kinks that we need to iron out. However, if it does appear that there is something wrong with an account, you can investigate it with our new logs feature. So uh, the previous dashboard also had a logs page, but that was just for API logs. And now we've expanded it to include all aspects of our system. So you've got auth, API, mail sync, sync back, and webhooks. I won't go into too much detail about what each of those are right now, but we're definitely intending to publish some documentation on that. Some of these are application scoped. So you can see all of the, request, or all of the logs for your application at one go. For example, API. So if we change like the account ID and move that over here, we can see that we're getting log lines for multiple accounts. Others, however, need to be scoped by an account because we don't really have enough like application data in order to say, oh, these all belong to your application. But once you choose an account, you can see what's going on. So for instance, this account is dead because there was a connection broken with error and it's going to retry again soon with a new connection. But what's really cool about these logs is that these are coming to you directly from our Elasticsearch cl cluster. So all of the log lines that we can see, you can now see. 
We do have a level like a Flask API layer where we like provide basic authentication, make sure that you're able to see these logs, and we also strip out some sensitive information. So for instance, we show you public IDs instead of server IDs because security through obscurity. Uh, but otherwise, uh, like you can see everything that's going on. I know a lot of our users were frustrated before because they would have to contact customer service, and then it was just like this really simple bug that they would have been able to see themselves if they had the logs for it maybe like a, a server credential error or things like that. Another cool feature that was introduced with our new dashboard was the concept of organizations. For the old dashboard, the, our database schema said that, that an application had to belong to one user. And so if you had multiple users that needed to see an application, you really couldn't unless you like were giving your credentials out to everyone else around. But for our new dashboard, we decided uh, to perform a database migration. So we introduced this new organization, and we made it so that applications and users both belong to organizations instead. This was a little tricky because we had to first like create the organization table, and then we had or we had to do it without any of the constraining relationships because none of the organizations existed yet. And if we tried to say, "Oh, a user needs an organization," that would fail because there was no organization. So we had to create the organization table without any of these constraints first, and then we had to go through and create organizations for all of the users in our database and add both their user and their applications to that organization. And then on the third pass, we were able to go through and update the constraints and be like, OK, now that this is all set and the database won't be upset about integrity errors, we need to actually make sure that this stays this way and that users don't accidentally end up without an organization. This also allows us to expose multiple applications for an organization. So I know a lot of people do like staging apps and production apps, and you would have to have multiple accounts just to have those different applications. But now you can very easily create a new one, and that's great. Uh, I'm also going to show you what it looks like from another user. So I'm going to log in as Jane Lane here, which is really just like a fake Gmail account I have. And you can see that Jane Lane has access to all of the same applications that my real Hala and Nihilus account did. But you'll notice that Jane can't create a new application. And that's because Jane is not an admin user. So when you're not an admin, you can't create, modify, or delete anything. You don't have access to like creating webhooks, you can't auth accounts, but you can see the logs. And so this is like very useful for a customer success role that you might not want to be able to give like full power over your app to. Uh, I went through that pretty quickly and I didn't have much else to talk about, but I bet Evan has some other things that he wants me to point out. Uh, <laughs> or <a> good start. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all right, so maybe I'll just open it to questions, and then if there aren't any, I'll just play around with the dashboard and show you some more of the cool features. Tasha. It's made for anybody, really. Like, whoever like sets up an application with Nihilus will create one of our accounts, uh, and they'll give them access to creating the application, authing users, seeing the logs. But you can also, like, like I just explained with the organization, you can add other users. So this is no longer just for like single developer apps. This is also for larger companies who need multiple people to have access to our applications and the logs and things like that. Any other questions? No? Do we want to show the larger applications? See how fast the accounts load when you have like thousands of them? Sure. After I just signed in. It's stressful on the slide. Address? There we go. 
All right, so this has 6,000 accounts and it's still loaded much, much faster. And we're investigating all of these stopped things right now. This might actually be an issue with our caching script that hasn't been running as smoothly as I would like and that's something we're working on right now. Sure. Actually, I don't have an endpoint. Um, but I'll just sign. For those of you who don't use our webhooks, our webhooks are basically a way to get notified uh, by us when an event happens instead of having the pull in our database for changes. And you need to set up an endpoint that responds with like a challenge parameter. So we have like some special testing infrastructure that allows us to create these endpoints very quickly. But I do not have that on this computer. Uh, but you can see some of the old ones I've created. Uh, it tells you like what the status of it. This one is failed because I did not turn it off before I quit the endpoint. Um, but for ones uh, that you've stopped yourself, it'll just say stopped, and you can reactivate it with this toggle. I'll do this, but it's not going to work because the endpoint's not up, and it'll come back with a nice error message, like invalid webhook callback URL, verification callback failed. Uh, but if it was up and running, you would just need to like press this little toggle, and that's nice. And some of the triggers that we support are like account connected, account running, account stopped, account invalid. And these are all like account management ones. So whenever an account changes state, you would get a webhook for it. Uh, same with account sync error. Then we've got message created, uh, which just triggers every time that a message is synced or a message is sent from our APIs. And then these three are special. These are like our tracking triggers. Uh, so you have to specify when you send a message that you want to track it. But if you do that, then we'll give you webhooks when someone opens that message or when someone clicked on a link inside that message or when a thread gets a reply. And these are very useful and a relatively new feature, but it's coming along very nicely. Uh, anything else? Yeah, it's super easy to just like sign in, create an application, start authing accounts. You can do that directly from our dashboard right here. Uh, we also are expecting, like as we get more customer feedback, we intend to add more features that will hopefully help like the investigation process for customer support issues. Uh, one of these that we have planned is to do like a per folder status. So right now you can only see like the status uh, per account. But if it says partial, that's not really all that helpful because it could be just one folder that's not syncing. Uh, so eventually we'll show you a list of all these folders and you can see exactly how many of them aren't running versus how many of them are. Oh, uh, something that I did not show yet. Uh, you can also click on these to get to an accounts details page. And this stuff right here is just like the same stuff that you could see before. But we also show you all of the logs for that account. So this account hasn't made any API requests, so there are none there. Uh, but you can see the mail sync logs. And if you wanted to see more of the mail sync logs, you could just very easily press this right here. And it takes us there with that filter already applied. But yeah, if you guys have any cool suggestions for features that we should add to the dashboard, definitely let us know. We are always looking for ways to make things better.